Okay. So we're we're gonna change our usual format today because it is a something of a special day. Um, we're memorializing a dear friend, Hanna Besser, whose tenth yard site is is this week. And you know, we there there so we unfortunately we've lost a lot of a lot of people and and, and you know why specifically Hana are we taking this time out to so you know that we learn about the, the history of, of of tzaddikim because we're to learn from them. So Hana Hana was a wonderful person. I wouldn't exactly call her a god doll, but she, there was absolutely this greatness to her, and she definitely had a life that we could learn a lot from. So we're gonna spend this, this time today talking about, and one of her dear neighbor has kindly agreed to be with us today. This is, this is uh, uh, Janine Shailo Galin. Galin. I, I, it was really hard for me to think about talking, what to talk about about Hannah, because um, Hannah, Hannah is part of a house. So not in 10 years, I can't believe she's she passed away 10 years ago. But even that, almost every Shabbos, one of my kids mentions her. It talks about her because she was part of a household. She was, you know, we grew in, we, we had a family. We moved to Spat. We only had friends. We didn't have family. Our children didn't have uncles, aunts, sisters, I mean, you know, grandparents. And all of a sudden, Hannah popped up in our life. I remember one day my husband came home and says, oh, we have new neighbors. I invited them for Shabbos. Okay, you know, it's like, <laughs> this is like part of the deal. I mean, who, I didn't, I never read. Really so twice who invites for Shabbos, he invites good, they're coming. But that was the beginning of a long, very close story. And it was one Shabbos and another Shabbos, and another Shabbos. Both of them, we became very, very friends. Not, not more friends, we became dear friends. And it was something very, very special. I think it was the first time that I really experienced like a very deep friendship that lasted through all the years of except for two. <laughs> and uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of the ladies here, I, I'm, I'm my friends, I'm good friends. But it was something very deep. It was like being a, having a sister. Maybe that's like that's like what it was. It was having a sister. I just want to tell you. I just want to describe one thing. First of all, Hannah was always so thoughtful. Like we're descend, we're descendant of Rabbi Ali Malach. So one time she came home and she told me, "Oh, I, I went to Jerusalem and I found this book and I got it for you. It's the stories of Rabbi Ali Malach." Or she would come for Shabbos and she would always bring something that she knew the children would like. Healthy, she was very health-minded even before she got sick. She was very, very health-minded, but she would always bring something that. Was that the children would say, Oh, thank you, sir. That was Hannah. It was so nice of you to bring it over, to bring it for us. And it was dessert or a salad or whatever it was. But it was something that she knew I was going to appreciate, be appreciated. She was so thoughtful of everybody. I just want to talk to you about Shabbos meals with Sarah. It was, oh, no, I called Sarah. <laughs> it was Hannah. Um, Hannah was having a Shabbos meal with Hannah was something very interesting. You know, Hashem, we're human beings. Sometimes the conversation slips a little bit. And she would always bring the conversation back to Shabbos. Like there was no, no idea of talking about Chol on Shabbos. Hannah was totally devoted to Shabbos. She would come in and say, Shabbos, Heliga Shabbos. And she would come in and say it. And it was like so nice. And she would like the whole atmosphere, like very, very holy, <laughs> very high. And Really, we found out a few times by being told, okay, no talking, call on Shabbos, that that's the way Shabbos should be. And she really told us from example, not by being tough, not by being, oh, how can you talk about us? Just by saying, you know, Shabbos, let's talk about the parasha. What do you have to say about the parasha? What did you hear this? Uh, and the Robert Tversky said that, and the Rebbe said that, and she would always bring something like in the middle of the talk of the everyday talk it was very interesting because um also like being you know where we're coming from we experience shabbos tables are very limited the experience of shabbos is very limited because you know people invited us invited us but most of it we just built on ourselves and all of a sudden having somebody 
It's like showing you the way that Hashem wants your Shabbos table to be that way. That's how it was with her every week or every, whatever she came. I mean, she came a lot, but whatever she came. And another, that's like one of the things I remember. I have to tell you, we, we inherited from her a bookcase. And maybe that's why I stand upright in my living room with my, my husband's farm there. And uh, maybe that's why we talk so much about Hannah, because it's like right in front of Hashabah's table there, you know, at the living room table, it's right there. But that's so much who she was. She was totally like Kedusha, you know? And, and modesty, and like sneers in a way of speech. She never said, I, 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 I. It was always like, she did things like, by the way, all of a sudden I found out she was helping this family, she was helping that family. Like, not that she was so wealthy, but but everybody that she could help, she helped them. And everything was done behind the back. Like, it was, um, another thing I remember from her is when she unfortunately got sick. One time, a few times, I, I she asked me to accompany her to the hospital. And uh, one time I went to the hospital. And she was really in pain, really, really in pain. Every, the whole time, I never heard her complain. Every time it was good. Thanks, thank you, Hashem. It's good. Thank you, Hashem. It's good. Which was like a, an amazing level. And we went to the hospital. She was really, really in pain. I mean, I had never seen her in such pain. And the doctor asked her from one to 10, what's the level of your pain? And she said, 10. And I just said, okay, I know. what do we do now? It was, the middle of the night, it was like four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, she, she woke me up and asked me to go with her to the hospital. To it. And I said, okay, and the doctor gave her a painkiller, a really strong painkiller, and she did that. And then at six o'clock, she told me, you know, now you can go home. Like, I'm in the hospital, I'm set up, and the, the, you should go home because your family's waiting for you. That was, she was concerned about others. Like, no, Hannah, I can't leave you. You're just like, you're like, you know, you're in pain. Women will take care of the kids, no problem. I mean, you know, some of them were already older by then, so it was only like maybe the two little ones and the three little ones, I don't remember. But and, and that's how she was. She was concerned about everybody. She said, no, 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 go home. Take take a cab, take a bus. There's no, there were no buses yet, but take a cab, go with a cab, and you go home. And I so I stayed a little bit later and then I finally I went home. You know, those were the days before the cell phone, so I couldn't even be in touch with, uh, with uh, my family. I don't know, maybe it was the beginning of the cell phone, but I don't think we had that. And, and, um, and that's what my family remembers about her. Also, another saying is that she loved music. She loved music. She loves the songs. And um, one of my sons in law is very, very, um, very gifted. So they used to come a lot for Shabbos, and they still do, but less because both Hashem and 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 I remember that every time he came, Motzei Shabbos, we would go there, and he would take the guitar and start playing the guitar, and she loved singing. There were a few songs that she really asked him, Yaakov, can you sing this? Can you sing this? Can you sing this? And you know, both Hashem have a lot of boys, so that all the boys that would go there and start singing was, you know, for her. <laughs> And she loved it. She loved music because she felt, and it's true, this music is something that's very close to the Nishana. And, you know, it makes you, when you have music that's Kedusha music, it really brings you close to Hashem. And that's how she felt very, very strongly. She felt the music brings her close to Kedusha. Now, I tell you, when, when um, the last few days, a lot of things happened when her daughter came and uh, and her little grandson, his name is Daniel, like uh, most of my grandchildren, I love my grandchildren. I remember when they came and they moved next door, it was so, so intense to meet her daughter that I heard so much about her, about her daughter and about her, this family. And a lot of things happened that like, it's totally like fitting Hannah being concerned about others. Like, I like, remember her, when they came to visit one time, her son-in-law told me, says, you know, one day I really wanted cold cuts. And what happens, um, my mother-in-law was in the hospital, my wife was in the hospital. And what happened, your son came and knocked on the door, says, would you like a cold cut set, cold cut sandwich? It's like, it's like, you know, it's like the whole atmosphere was like giving, giving, giving. Another thing, and I'll end there because I don't know how much time we have, is that um, I never heard one bad word from her. I never heard Lashon Hara from her. Never, never, never.
over the 10 years or 12 years or 14 years that we we knew her that we were friendly with her that she came to my house like a lot i never heard say anything bad about anybody it was always always if somebody was not from oh it's not from yet and and if somebody is doesn't oh well you didn't know you know like always looking for a reason why the situation was the way it was looking for a reason why it happened the way it was and you know there's a lot to learn like judy said there's a lot to learn from everybody but mom is like i she's really part of a of our life and we still remember her really 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 in, in, tremendously because some people have very impact have a strong impact on your life and other people you know they go through your life and then you meet them again 10 years later but some people they, they just even if you meet them one time sometimes you feel like wow you know this is like i remember for the rest of my life and this is what Hannah, Hannah was. She was such a powerful person, but again, not a powerful person overwhelming you. She was a powerful person because of who she was. Soft, going, smiling, always smiling, even when she was really, I remember I was with Rachel, my daughter was very, very close to her. My daughter went through a little bit of a hard time and some some and she was very close to her and she came she was sitting there in there was in Hassan, i think yeah she was a regime in and she came she wanted to to say goodbye to hannah she, she was in the hospital and when we went to visit her the first thing is hannah had a big smile on her face and say you know like oh i'm so glad you came she couldn't talk anymore but the smile that she gave her was like thank you for coming it was deep she said the you know the last minutes of her life the last days of her life and the only thing she was concerned about like whoa it's so nice that you came to see me you know and that's how Hannah was the entire that's what I remember from her for the entire life and I think that she had a very big impact on my children also that remember her positive a positiveness in life her way of seeing life a way of seeing who who you are in a positive life and that's something that, you know, Elo is Elo. I mean, in Malasad, we, we all like uh, trying to keep to Rosh Hashanah with Chuyot. And uh, I think that um, there's many things that we can take on in her memory and her schools. But I think that that's one thing that really, if we can just like one time not say something about somebody. I mean, I'm sure you all today you something. I'm not telling all of you, but it's just like, I know that. Every sometimes when I feel like saying something, like I got really angry at somebody and I want to say something, so I said, "Would Hannah say something like that?" I said, "No, she said she wouldn't." And I said, "No, so I'm not going to say it." And I, so um, that I hope that I gave you a little bit of a picture of Hannah, Hannah Besser, and uh, should have ever should have a really a good year, a sweet year, and should be just mama's trust of us. Amazing. Amazing. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Just for everybody who came late, we're, we're talking about a, a dear friend whose 10th uh, yard site is, is this week, Hannah Besser, Hannah Bas Bas uh, Alter Chaim. So um, I actually only knew her for two years. I mean, I moved to Tzvat pretty late. And, and I mean, she, in a way, she was the inspiration for the Bas Medrash. I mean, she had such a hunger for learning. And we were both of us were always like searching for some cheer, some place to learn. But my, my this, I have this very powerful memory of Hana, which was once we were driving someplace and we stopped off at, at one of these um, you know, rest stops along the way in the highway and some guy came up to us. He's like peddling um, uh, these book, you know, books, a combination of the um, New Testament and, and Hanach. And Hana like walks right up to the guy, takes one, in front of him, I'm like, you know, horrified. She takes it, tears it, tears it, throws it into the wind. You know, it's like, I'm like, but, uh, it's fearless, fearless for Hashem. Fearless for Hashem. Anyway, so you should, you know, at this point, I think we could listen to some of her own words and we'll get a sense of, of who she is. Okay. So Judy asked me to read a short chapter of Hannah's book. Hannah wrote this book after the war, Second Lebanese War it was, and don't ask me the date, but it was like 15 years ago, whatever it was. 2006. 2006, that's what I meant. And when 90% of us left spot, because we were, uh, we all remember this, like, oh my gosh, and uh, she stayed, right? Yes, she 
she saved. So um, I just want to say one thing to fill in what uh, she used to come to our house all the time also for Shabbos meals. And she was a redumpster chasida. She every time she would bring her saver and she would always give it to Torah, Torah of, from the Zadamska Rebbe. I thought that was amazing. Whatever. Okay. What? I don't know. Redumpska Rebbe. Redumpska Rebbe. I mean, I've met Hasidim before with their Rebbe, but she was a Hasidah. She was really, you know, like that was her thing. Okay. This is called. Sense? I don't know. Yeah. She was a born born uh, There is a best that was. Yeah, I don't. I don't I remember. Think, as I remember, mm -hmm. she mentioned that her family had originally come from that neighborhood. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, and she really connected to his Torah. Okay. okay, this is called Katusha Tshuva, because that's when they were, they were sending Katushas up here, up in the north, uh, when we all ran away. The Katusha missile exploded while I was standing in my kitchen in spot. Looking out the window was the view of Mount Miron and the hills of the Galilee. She was living where Tova Aronson lives now. Anybody know? Yeah, that was her apartment. So she was looking out that window. I'll call you back. I hung up on, on my friend who had taken her family out of town after their own two close encounters with Katusha's. Raw power. My heart pounded. My knees turned to jelly. Instant fear, but too late to do anything about it. The missile was louder than any thunderbolt, louder than 10 thunderbolts. I'm okay, I realized. It didn't even break my windows. How is that possible? That had to be next door. Then quiet. I waited a few minutes. Except for a fast pulse, my body had returned to normal. I had to find out where that missile had exploded. I cautiously left my house. Mom mo yeah. Moments later, I found it. It was a few old city cobblestone streets downhill from me near the Abu Hashur. A direct hit into the Midrashat Safnat. Saf Midrash at Safna, Women's Seminary, Baruch Hashem, no one was there. I walked home quickly for safety's sake because I needed to walk to talk to someone. I knew whom I would speak to first. When I arrived home, I opened my sitter. Come in. Gatan you, I began, because my mother always called him Gatan. What does Gatan you mean? I had asked my Rebbe many years ago. Can I address with Hashem this way? He had smiled. It's a sweet term of endearment. Yes, you can. Got to you, I said now. I could start crying. I always do this. I'm sorry. Thank you for protecting me. You never intended that missile to hurt me. I know that. But it wasn't just random chance that it exploded so close to my house. Why did you need to get my attention? What chuva am I ignoring that you wanted me? I have stopped complaining that Hashem doesn't answer me. I have friends who get clear answers when they pray, like it's a two-way conversation. It's not like that for me. I've learned to pay attention to the first thought that comes to my mind after I've asked him a question. Oh, her, okay, I need to take care of that. I had offended a friend last week and I hadn't made peace with her yet. It's such a little thing, you sent such a big wound. <laughs> Hundreds. Maybe thousands of people had been terrified by that Katusha blast 10 minutes ago. I knew our creator had a reason for every single one of us. The Ahavta L'Riyacha Kamocha. Loving your fellow Jew like yourself is no small thing. I know it's important, Hashem, but there must be something else. Please tell me. No answer. I finished davening. <clears throat> a few hours later, there were more sirens, more danger. I pushed my bed into safe corner I had created in my bedroom, far from the windows. Sitting down on it, I propped my back up against the wall with pillows and got comfy in my Kedusha corner. No booms, but you just never know. They might still come. Time for a cheshbon and nefesh, a spiritual accounting. Hana, do you really believe that Hashem loves you? I asked myself. Or have you just been quoting that party line? How do you feel about Hashem now after that Kedusha exploded so close to you today? It sort of ends there and now it continues on. Mommy, don't cry. Mommy, everything will be okay. My mother wasn't the type to cry. She's going back now. This is a flashback. 
not since the Holocaust. But today she was crying. It was the worst day I could remember in my young life. Today was the day that we had to put the padlock on our little store and walk away. Nobody wanted it. My father would never get out of his job sewing, sewing in uniform factory. His, yeah, would never get out of his job sewing in the uniform factory. And my mother would have to get a factory job now. They didn't let Jews go past the eighth grade in Poland. No education, no job. She was from Poland? She, she grew up, she was born in DP camp, right? Right, right. Yeah. Mommy, everything will be okay, you'll see. After I'm dead, everything will be okay. You'll come to my grave and you'll fall down to me. <laughs> everything is good now. Sorry. Me, life will never be good. It's her brother talking. So I learned young that Hashem didn't like us because Hashem didn't like my mother and he didn't like me either. Other people he favored, but we weren't on that list and there wasn't any way to get on that list. That's what I thought for most of my life. Even though I grew up and prospered and life was really good to me. It's temporary. He's just giving me a little break before the next whack. The wax came. And then I was more sure than when I was a child that my mother was right. It led to all those bad egos like selfishness, jealousy, and bitterness. I was sure of it when my mother passed away when I was 21. And I was positive it was true when my father passed away some years later and my divorce clenched it. Studying Torah let me see Hashem through new eyes. A whole lifetime had to be reframed. Hashem is good, is all good, and gives only good. It just doesn't look so from our limited perspective in this finite world. I bought it, but I knew I only believed it in my head. My God still believed that my mother was right. Because I'll say that it is a 40 year journey from the head to the heart. And I haven't been religious yet for 40 years. It's figurative anyway. 40 is symbolic of transformation. Before the Katusha started exploding in July, I would have estimated that my belief in God's total goodness had worked its way down to about the middle of my neck. Hannah, does Hashem love you? I first question on myself. The explosion had blown away all the emotional and mental veils. My soul was the calm, clear sea. It was easier to see into myself than ever before. Yes, I answered myself honestly. Whether he chooses to end my life or make it more difficult with wounds or suffering, or whether he protects me from all harm, Hashem loves me. He loves me more than I will ever be able to comprehend while I am in this finite world. I'm sure. I believe it. Wow. All the way from the brain to the heart and right down into the kishkes. So tshuva can feel this way too. No dramatics, no high, no tears, just a good, deep, calm, honest answer. I sighed. Thank you, Hashem. Question and answer in less than two minutes. A little bit more. I left my Katusha, my Katusha corner. <laughs> Katusha corner. <laughs> I left my Katusha corner, walked into the living room, and flipped a few pages on the small weekly calendar hanging on the wall. Av was a heavy month for me for more reasons than Tisha Bav. Two teachings of Kazal flashed in my mind in rhythm as I flipped the two calendar pages after Tisha Bav. Flip. I found my father's yard site, 16th of Av. It is known that every year on the earth side, each soul in heaven is judged in order, in order to ascend higher as it journeys ever closer to Hashem. Lip, here it is, my mother's yard site, six days after my father's, the 22nd of Av. When a child does tshuva over something negative, you learn from a parent, the parent's soul is also rectified. Mom, I finally learned in Olam Hazed a smidgen of what you learned 37 years ago when you entered the next world. Mom, get ready. You're really going to go up high this year. Wow. 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 Right? Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for this. Judy picked this out. I just have two, two quickie things to say. Um, another thing about Hannah is she, she had the first original spot line. She used to send us around um, all the news, like to all of us on our email addresses. So one time, one time, I, I can only say this after reading this. One time I asked her, like, 
why'd you do this? So she said, really, I'm a yenta. So she said, to do it, she said, I want to take that and bring it into a good place. So, so she says, I was able to transform that part of myself into a good thing to like let everybody know all the good stuff that's going on, whatever everybody needs. Like to, she turned it into a huge mitzvah. And the last but not least thing is that um, when she would come to my house, besides her redumpska Torah, she would always bring something yummy, like Janine said. And she used to make this amazing chocolate, and it was really healthy. And I made recipes to give out to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so here, please take one enjoy in her school i thought about it i woke up the other morning i said that's what Hannah would want me to do to give out that recipe so enjoy okay thank you yes okay quick quickly because we we don't come here hold, hold this hold this Oh, this is funny. Hannah Besser is the reason I'm in spot. Yeah. She, um, I knew her before she moved to spot, and we used to go to Torah classes together. Yeah. <clears throat> we'd sit next to each other, and the rabbi would talk, uh, Rabbi Tversky. Anyway, <laughs> whenever he finished, she said yes, and then she'd start flipping through pages of notes, and she said, and also this. And also this, and also this. And when she get done, I, I looked at her. We were friends. Said, Where did you get this information? I go to the library. I never got any of this information. And she said, I've studied it in Israel. And I was so impressed uh, that I, that increased my longing. I'd never been in Israel. And um, so when I knew I was going to be able to go for the first time, she wrote down the places that she studied. And one of them was here in Spot. And um, I stayed with a friend of hers. And the friend of hers said, well, one of the reasons everything is so good here is because we do Tehillim. I said, what's that? What's Tehillim? I don't know. <laughs> and uh, she told me about the power of Tehillim. So it's like two key parts of my life, the studying and where I'm studying and where I'm living. And the other thing was, that I learned about Tehillim and the value <coughs> of Tehillim. And it's all from Kana Besser. And also my first Orthodox Shabbat was in Kana Besser's house. Wow. Okay, one more, I'm sorry, one, one more. All right, Susie, I'm, I'm sorry, Joanna. Just, we run out of time. I'll just face it. Okay. So I'd like to say is that when, um, when Hannah like first came to spot the first, you know, if someone's new and they want to know where all kinds of things are, they're getting settled. The first thing she asked is where are the shearing? Where are the shearing for women? That was like her first question. And, um, and then the next thing was like, um, you know, pe you know, people started using email and everything, but like she, she used email, but like she only used it for Kedusha. I, she wasn't just like spam on email, like, um, like, she, like uh, Tova said, like she connected everyone, especially from the, during the war, like we all ran away and, um, and she kept everyone connected. Oh, sorry. Most of it, like she said, 90%, like a lot of, a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us ran away and um, she connect, she kept everyone connected. This person's in here. This is what they're writing about everything, reporting on what was happening. And, um, and then she also like, tremendous amount of chesed that she was doing, but she never looked at it that it was helping people who were needy or unfortunate, whatever. She would put on the, she would put on her email, here is a mitzvah, here's an opportunity, who's going to be the lucky one that's going to grab it and get it first. And she wasn't doing some kind of like shtick or like promotion. She, she was 100% sincere. That's how she always looked at it. If there was someone who needed something, it was like, it was a gift. It was an opportunity for you. And if you were the one that got to do it, you were so fortunate. That's just, that's how she saw it. And then I still remember just to finish with one time she called me up. She said, there's a very special new person in spot. She's like so high quality. She's so special. Like you, you must meet her. And that was Judy Pagan. <laughs> She, 
Lush Plush, that's right. She, she, uh, you know, some, I, I, I was thinking of moving to Tzvat. My friend said, oh, call Kana Besser, call Kana Besser. Really just to talk about, like, tell me about neighborhoods, tell me about, oh, you have to come stay here. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect stranger. You're letting in your house. No problem. No problem. So she, she was all, all along my, my spiritual guide and very much the reason why we're all sitting here. And, um, you know, I'm just very grateful that we have this time to remember her. She deserves to be remembered. And we could all learn so much from her. Um, we're we're going to go to the to the kever. Her, the Friday, the, the 20th of Elul is, is the actual um, yard site. So whoever would like to go to, to the kever on Friday, please let me know. If you can drive other people, please let me know. And um, uh, that's a good that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Okay. So make make your holidays Thursday.